Okay, so now that you have these amazing results, would you have ever, ever imagined when you started? Because you did HCG before you came in, and it was online. You ordered it online? No, um, October 2010, I met with somebody that was doing the homeopathic version. So it's homeopathic. Just mm -hmm. talk, speak a little louder. And then met with her once a week, lost 28 pounds or 29 pounds in 28 days. And got the same basic information about how the HCG protocol is done. You know, the loading, the low calorie protocol, and then supposedly there was something after that I didn't really pay attention to, which would have been the three weeks. Yeah, <laughs> you know, the most important part, you know. Um, you know, so I did that and successfully lost the weight, but didn't really change anything about myself and thought that, that would, the weight was going to be enough motivation to figure the rest of it out to get me back to where I needed to go. Never works that way. No, it doesn't. I know. <laughs> Weights does not change your relationship with food. No. Sorry. <laughs> Anyhow. So then I um, successfully gained it all back in a year and gained five extra pounds just for the fun of it, I guess. So then um, November, December 2011, started researching things on the internet that for me could be more like life-changing. Um, I was tired of feeling tired. I knew I wasn't living and enjoying my life anymore. I wasn't going to things for my children because I was embarrassed to be seen in public. Do I wasn't you, going out with my husband because I was embarrassed to be seen in public. <laughs> do you think that losing that weight with your first round with the homeopathic HCG and then, and then gaining it all back plus some... Did that in itself make it worse for you? Even more embarrassing that, you, yes, you come out, you have all this success, and then very short period later, it's gone. Yeah, and it was up and down, too. Like, I, you know, I gained and lost 10 pounds, 15 pounds swing here and there throughout that year. Mm -hmm. um, but it was just continually feeling like a failure. You know, I felt mm -hmm. like a failure as a mom because I wasn't able to, or not willing to go to the kids' things. Yeah. Failure as a wife because this isn't who we married and this isn't who I am. And it changed your, it changed the way you were sexually. It changed the way you were um, in public with him. It changed Because you were really insecure thing. about it. It changed everything. Yeah. I mean, we didn't, you know, I wanted to hide in my home in sweats. Can you believe that you let your body take, I mean, your judgment of your body. Mm -hmm. I want to rephrase that because it isn't your body's fault no, that you no. felt that way. It was the way you were judging yourself. Yeah, you because that's, you that? that's who I thought I was. I mean, I knew that wasn't who I was. Yeah, but that's how you were valued. That was a huge part of how you evaluated your, that, your, your value as a soul and as a person. And other yeah. women, that's how I had them valued too. as well, yeah. So if you saw a woman who was, in your mind, the ideal, the ideal that you thought would make someone more valuable, was she... She was competition. She was threat. And so you would just dagger her. <sighs> yep. And then get pissed at your husband because you think that he was looking at her. <laughs> exactly. And he's like, what? Huh? Exactly. Maybe yeah. he did, but you know what? Um, so did you. Something that you taught me was the chocolate cake theory. Women look at chocolate cake and go, oh. Yeah. Men look at women the same way, but it's just chocolate cake. <laughs> oh, it's true. And we're wired so differently. But yeah, I am not, uh, I love the beauty, of, I love the human body in the female form. Would you rather look at a naked man or a naked woman? And I'm not gay. Not that there's anything wrong with that. And right. you're not gay. And we would agree, right? Right. With the female body is amazing. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. Right. So, something to be proud of, no matter what shape and size you are. You know. <laughs> exactly. And then the other thing, too, that, that kind of hit home for me was when you said that, you know, and it relates more to your children, but it, it relates to the women that you have in your life that you adore. If you were to take them, their souls, out of their bodies and put them in completely different bodies, your children, the women you, you love in your life, whatever, the men you love in your life, You'd still recognize and know who they are based on that, their soul, their spirit, mm -hmm. and not based on what they were in. Mm -hmm. I know. The package. <laughs> you, know? you understand that is so profound when you think about it. Because yeah. many times we attach ourselves to our flesh. Right. And it isn't true. Nope. <laughs> 
So then when I went on the went on online to start researching something, you know, I was looking at some other like cleanses and then there was like ideal protein I'd heard about and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. All this stuff. Mm-hmm. So I came across your book, I think probably through the must like maybe through the or... you know, I don't even remember how. But anyway, so I downloaded it on my my e reader and started reading it and it just hit home right away all about the emotional part of it, which was the missing link for me, you know, even on the homeopathic one. It never addressed the issues that make you use food, alcohol, exercise, drugs, whatever, as a crutch. Because that is the thing that is different about the way that you do it. Mm -hmm. You know, you have this, this wonderful way of looking at things and getting people as you've put even peel the onion getting people to see what is at the root of the thing that's kind of how that's making you feel that you need whatever it is as a, as a crutch yeah why you compensate so it's not even looking at your overeating no it's like well the overeating is no is not the issue right it's the insecurity that you're feeling exactly that whatever it is you're putting there to right. cover it up it's whatever you're sucking your thumb with right it's not the thumb that is the problem right. it's the reason why you feel you have to have it to just live and function in life right you know? so i mean that was that was a huge thing for me and it was hell to go through at times i know because why i want you to explain that because a lot of people going through this process without me are not necessarily succeeding like my patients do. I have a hundred percent success rate with people who do everything I say. I'd have to say that for me anyway, um, let's see. I looked at people that cried, women that cried as weak for whatever reason. They didn't have the strength to deal with whatever they were doing. But the truth of it was I was using Food or alcohol to cover up. What's your form of crying? Yeah. And when I went through it and didn't use that and really listened to hunger every time that I ate and everything that I ate and just really paid attention to to what was going on and figuring out, well, do I want to eat right now because I'm looking for entertainment? Do I want to eat right now because I'm bored? Do I feel entitled to put half and half in my coffee even though I shouldn't? Mm -hmm. Do I? (laughs) Yeah. Okay. So... You were talking about just self-esteem, of focusing on the emotional aspects. So when you came in here, when you came in for that first meeting, did you have, I mean, you'd read the book. And had you, um, the other thing is, had you gone and watched any of my videos on YouTube? Um, I think I did a couple. Okay. I think I did a couple. <clears throat> and then I did practice with the hunger scale for about a week before I actually was able to meet with you. And did you feel like that practice week really opened your eyes to it? Um, or- it did quite a bit because I, you know, I was already looking at, boy, it doesn't really take much food, mm-hmm. but not to the degree that... Now they don't. Yeah, because I still had emotional things that happened a couple of days before I came in and met with you, and I turned yeah. to food, and I ate till I was stuffed. Oh, no. Which is funny that, you know, after those loading days, you kind of go, are you kidding me? Do I ever really want to feel like that? Because you just feel gross. So during the very low calorie protocol, you're following hunger, following hunger. And it was, there were some times that were really hard, probably because you had to cry. Right. Otherwise, I had a really would... bad day at work and it was emotionally hard. And it, you know, there's things that I dealt with that I shouldn't have had to deal with. But in the end, it ended up making my relationship with my husband way stronger because he became that person that he used to be for me, which was the confidant and the person I could talk to about it and you know it's you know even last night we had a discussion about he had a really bad day at work which we never we never bring that home and talk to each other about but it's really important when you know it's important it's an emotional part of what we're here for each other for yeah and it helps you process too so you're not just stuffing it away or ignoring it you're actually looking at it and trying to find a better view a better way to think of it and you end up getting over it real quick right moving on yep I know you know and then the thing that that I figured out here was really getting to the bottom of like my lack of self self self-esteem and then being able to look at things with more compassion and 
looking at a, instead of, you know, other women as competition, I was able to gain that self-esteem and self-worth based not at all on what people look like. Yeah. I mean, that, cause you really I, had I to see said. yourself from a different point of view. And once you could find that your value wasn't physical, didn't you feel like the way you viewed other people all of a sudden changed? It completely changed because... And it didn't take effort. No. It just happens. It it's does. a byproduct of changing the way you see yourself. Yeah, and it does completely change the way you look at other people because... You're no longer judging them by that standard. Right. You, see, you may see someone who's 300 pounds, 250 pounds where you started, but you have compassion, and you, you try to seek past that shell, and you, and you actually unconditionally love them to start, rather than... Judging them based on what they look like. It's so crazy. Mm -hmm. I know. Yeah. I mean, and even, you know, we have people that come into work that are not nice. Mm-hmm. But you realize that there's got to be something going on in their life. Not that it's an excuse. We still should be nice to each other. But, but there is something going on in their life that you just don't know about. No, and they obviously feel bad enough about it that they feel so bad about it that they think it's okay to treat everybody poorly so that you can feel bad about everything too. Yeah. 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 So it's been great, you know, really figuring out what true hunger feels like. And, you know, because some of it's like, oh, is that digestion or am I thirsty? Do I need to drink water? Because there's a big part of it that's water. So do you realize, oh agreed, do you realize that what you're doing right now is you're going to your body to answer questions rather than going to some diet guru right. to answer your questions? Which is and the are funny, they really a guru? <laughs> which really? is the funny thing because all the stuff that I was ever raised with, all the information is completely bunk. I know. It is a total, this last three weeks, of being able, you know, adding the fat back and just listening to hunger and being able to eat whatever I want, pretty much. <laughs> I know you're shocked. You're like, I've eaten cheese. What? I, mean, I eat a ton of cheese. I eat a ton of avocados. <laughs> I eat a lot of red meat. And it's all relative to hunger. Oh, completely. Because you're not, you're no longer measuring, you're no longer using no, a no, caloric no, no. assessment. It no. is all based on, you may give yourself a plate full of food. The decision to stop has nothing to do with the no, quantity as it does with not. your sense yep. of awareness. And it's really kind of stopping and assessing often when you're eating. Mm -hmm. Just like, okay, where am I at? Am I actually hungry or is it just so stinking good that I want to keep eating? Yeah, the other thing have you noticed too because you're using your hunger as a foundation that once you, you actually confirm you're truly hungry, the next step is going back to the body to think of, well, what do you crave? What do you... What is the body craving? And mm -hmm. you'll go, ooh, I need some salt. Mm -hmm. I need some, you know, and that's where the avocado and sea salt and lime. And you really are engaging the body in the yep. decisions. I mean, I went through a period where I couldn't eat enough balsamic vinegar. Plain balsamic vinegar. I put it on everything. You put it on some fresh mozzarella? I put it on chicken. I put it on lettuce. I put it, I mean, pretty much anything I could dip in it, I dipped you, it in. Yeah. And then this last couple of weeks has been avocados and tomatoes. Amazing. And we've been throwing it in with Kelmada olives and olive oil, salt and pepper, and yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, yeah. it, it, it's cool to really listen to, what is it that I need right now? Some days it is red meat. Red meat is the thing. Other days it's chicken. Other days it's, you know. Fruit. <laughs> a fruit. Or it's like, you know, I really want lettuce. Mm -hmm. Which, who knew that you'd be like. Or something really about waffles. <laughs> yeah. You're like, yeah, I've had plenty of cheese. I think it's time for some red, some greens. <laughs> yeah, and you'll notice too in your menstrual cycle, there are times where I'm like, man, what am, what is my body craving? I'm hungrier. It's taking more food. And my body's craving chocolate. Like I'll sit there and go, oh, you know what would make this feeling go away? Is a piece of dark chocolate. Mm -hmm. Do I not listen to that? Of course you do. <laughs> There's something in that chocolate, and I eat it, but again, it's always within that that range of hunger. So right. you're constantly, you're never, ever going to be hurt, hurting your body again. And the moment you do, what you'll what you'll realize is like, wow, that was awful. And it, you'll pull back in a little bit. You just, you check yourself in. Exactly. And that, you know, that's something else too, is like, I don't ever look at any day as an oops, like, oh, I messed up. This whole thing is all a practice day every day mm -hmm. because you're listening to something that changes with menstrual shock which shocked me I know. at those three to four days before I get my period uh -huh. I almost can't eat enough food I, I am like hungry like a crazy person all well, the time but I still listen 
too, yeah. and assess, do I need to really eat right now? Mm -hmm. Do I need to drink water? Am mm -hmm. I, you know, like, is there something emotionally going on? What yeah. is going on? Well, and you'll also recognize too, right before your period, that you are craving starches. They're more hormonally powerful. They'll nip that hunger in the butt a lot faster than the fats during that time. Your body is telling you something powerful, something powerful. I do not question it. And the only thing too is like when I notice I'm not actually eating enough fruit. Like I eat strawberries and apples and oranges and I like fat. Then I start to crave the sugar stuff, which yeah. I know is true. Yeah, it's a narcotic center of the brain talking to you. Yeah. I mean, there's, that's real, but you're the, I'm in control here. Yep. You know what I mean? Or your body is in control. You don't have to, I don't know. I just think that there's a beautiful blend between the body telling you what it needs when it needs it and your intelligence saying, you know what, I've done that before. I'm yep. not doing that again. Exactly. Like, I know what cheesecake tastes like. I don't really need to have it. I'm going to wait till I really want something. And crave it. I don't know. Till the point where I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to eat that and it's going to be so good. Like your beer. <laughs> like your yummy beer that you're going to plan for Mom's Day, Mother's Day. You're going to go in and have that beer when you're hungry. Right. And, and enjoy every and enjoy the hell out of it which exactly. is the thing is like it's funny because food and it's something I think everybody knows but you forget it food is so good when you're hungry oh it's way better way better so mm -hmm. if you eat five bites and you're like you know what hunger's gone and you put it aside and you go back to it even 45 minutes an hour later when that hunger is back and you try it again you're like Damn, that's just as good as before. <laughs> I know, rather than just eating it all at once. Right, and then by the and end you're like, eh, that wasn't good. even that good. <laughs> you yeah. know, like, yes, it was when you were hungry. <laughs> I know. It's honestly, it's a totally different game. The diet industry does not want you to know that anybody who tells you how many calories to eat doesn't have, inte the integrity is not quite there. Now, I take that back because there are people who are just naive to the information. They don't know it. I told people about calorie counting. I taught it. That's what I was taught at the university level. But I will tell you right now that that, ignor that naive concept is so shallow. That's such a shallow measure of the body's capacity to fuel itself. Well, it's, so, it was, pardon my French, it was a bit of a mind fuck for me mm -hmm. these last three weeks to be able to eat the high fat stuff that the diet industry has always told us is bad. Now, I was eating really good, healthy fats. Lots of avocados, yeah. olives, olive oil, things like that. Animal. But it doesn't matter if it's healthy or not. Mm -mm. It's like I listened to hunger, and I could eat whatever I wanted. I swore I was going to come in here and have gained weight. Yeah, when I say this to everybody, when I say, no, the goal is that you are eating what you want. Now, obviously, it, it requires that you eat within that scale of hunger. And the funny thing is because you're allowing yourself anything you want, have you noticed your wants have changed? Yeah. That it isn't all graham crackers? No, it's not. It's not. Yeah, and I'm sure when I get my period without being on the vocabulary protocol, I might have a different experience, but... We just have to trust it. Yeah. Every and time not, and not have guilt. Right. That's the one thing, too. How many women have guilt when they're hungry before their period? Is that not just messed up? Mm-hmm. It's crazy. And then they judge themselves thinking that, oh, I just suck. And then they binge to compensate. And no wonder you're gaining some weight. Right. No wonder on top of the fluid you're holding. Right. And then right after you start your period, all of a sudden things start rebalancing. And uh, it's just funny. The diet industry is a man's world. It is not a woman's world. And it's, it's time that we get out of it. And how does it feel to be off of that crazy train? Awesome. You've been on it for a long time. I was. I mean, I was raised in it. Yeah. How does it feel? to get back to what you were like as a child on many different levels. It is quite interesting because one of the things that you talk about is that eat like a child. So eat when you're hungry and don't necessarily interrupt what you're doing just because of time or whatever. Mm -mm. And it's true. I mean... Can you believe it? When I'm busy doing stuff, I'm not going to stop to eat just because I don't want to. <laughs> you wait till you're hungry. <laughs> well, that it's it's really about finding things that you really like to do. It's it's like activating that creative part of the brain where it's not passive anymore. You're not sitting there waiting for something for life to be given to you. Right. You're you're the creator of it. Get out there and do it. You know. Right. Um, and that's the other part. This really forces you to get off your butt and do something about your life. Right. It's just the way that you not about your weight. The way that you've put it together is the missing link for every person that is trying to do something and change their life. 
for whatever, under eating, overeating, exercising, alcohol, drugs, whatever, I know. it is the missing piece because it gets you back to who you are. It's pretty elementary. It's not rocket science. It's really just love who you are. Stop judging yourself to some crazy standard that you've been taught that isn't true. It isn't authentic. It's all, it's all based on someone's extreme insecurity and they created some idea to make them feel secure and then they decided everybody else was just as flawed as they were and then we all have to do the same thing. It's, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. I'm a living testament of, of surviving that insanity. And I'm just sharing what I, the gift I've been given. It's just, I'm sharing it. It's not mine. It's not. I'm not the only person talking about this. I just applied it to this process. say you're out there doing it, though. <laughs> well, it's not boring, that's for sure. Thank you so much for sharing this. I'm going to go ahead and turn it off.